Maintaining a normal body temperature is an essential element in infant care. During pregnancy, the mother's body works to maintain a stable intrauterine temperature. After birth, the infant must adapt to the colder extrauterine environment by the metabolic production of heat. If the infant is not able to maintain a normal temperature and develops hypothermia, it is likely to have lasting negative effects on neonatal development. Thermoregulation is the ability to balance heat production and heat loss to maintain a normal body temperature and is a critical physiological function associated with the neonate's survival and the cornerstone of newborn care. Neonates are prone to rapid heat loss because they have a large ratio of surface area to volume, decreased subcutaneous fat mass, greater body water content, and immature, thin skin, leading to increased evaporative water and heat losses. Infants lose heat through four mechanisms, those being evaporation, conduction, radiation, and convection. Let's look closer at each of these mechanisms and what caregivers can do to mitigate their effects. Evaporation is the loss of heat through the conversion of water to gas. In adults, when we become too hot, our body will begin to sweat to reduce the body temperature. Anytime the infant is wet, it is at risk for excessive heat loss. This can occur immediately after delivery when the baby is covered in wet amniotic fluid or after a bath. It is extremely important to dry the infant in these situations to prevent heat loss. The amount of heat loss is inversely related to humidity. For example, if you were standing in a warm, humid sauna, you would lose less heat than if you were standing in a dry environment. For this reason, infants at risk for evaporative heat loss are placed inside a heated and humidified incubator. Conduction is heat transfer through direct contact between two objects. Heat naturally will move from the hot object to the colder one. The rate of heat transfer depends on the temperature gradient and the areas of contact. There are numerous opportunities for infants to lose heat through conduction. If an infant is placed on a cold surface, like an exam table or scale, it will lose heat through conduction. To minimize conductive heat loss, surfaces the infant will be placed on will be pre-warmed. This prevents conductive heat loss. When the infant is placed directly on the skin of its parent during skin-to-skin -skin care or kangaroo, the parent will transfer heat from their body to the infant, which maintains a normal temperature in the infant. Convection is heat transfer through the movement of air or fluid molecules across the skin. For example, if you were to jump into a swimming pool with a temperature colder than your body temperature, the heat in your body would transfer into the water cooling you. Alternatively, if you were to sit in a hot tub, the heat in the water would transfer to your body making you hot. To prevent convective heat loss, infants should be clothed, if appropriate, and kept away from drafts or ventilation systems. Caps are important for preventing convective heat loss. Simply putting a hat on a full-term infant can decrease heat loss by about 25%. Radiation is heat transfer that occurs through electromagnetic waves. Unlike conduction and convection, radiation does not require a medium for transmission of heat. The rate of radiant heat transfer depends on the temperature gradient between the objects, the distance, and the angle of the heat source. For example, if you were laying near a window that received lots of sunshine or on a beach in the sun, even if it were cold outside, the sunlight would still feel warm. In radiation heat loss, 
Infants will lose heat to nearby objects of lesser temperature, like cold walls of the incubator, window, or other objects. Radiation heat loss can be responsible for 40% or more of heat loss in infants. In radiation heat loss, infants will lose heat to nearby objects of lesser temperature, like cold walls of the incubator, window, or other objects. Radiation heat loss can be responsible for 40% or more of heat loss in infants. For this reason, incubators have double walls and can combat radiation heat loss as the inner wall should remain warmer than the outside wall, which is exposed to the cooler environment. To prevent heat loss through radiation, the ambient temperature in the delivery room can be increased before the infant is born. The infant radiant warmer table works in this method to warm the infant. The source generates a heat which is set at a predetermined temperature and aimed towards the infant which is warmed. Numerous devices and strategies are employed to help maintain a neutral thermal environment. One strategy is regulated by the incubator or isolates and the radiant warmer tables. These devices function on two different modes, those being manual or servo controlled. When these devices are in manual mode, the user sets a desired temperature and the device will maintain a steady heat output at that setting, much like setting your oven. When these devices are in manual mode, the user sets a desired temperature and the device will maintain a steady heat output at that setting, much like setting your oven. When the oven is set to 350 degrees, it will use internal sensors to ensure that the temperature inside the oven is always 350 degrees no matter the temperature of what may be cooking inside. With the isolate, the nurse will set a desired temperature and the heater will regulate the heat output to maintain the set temperature. If the infant's temperature falls below or above the set temperature, the heater will not react. Instead, it will continue to maintain output to maintain the set air temperature and which may allow the infant to become too cold or overheated. The servo mode utilizes an electronic feedback system to adjust heater output to maintain a set temperature at the sensor. This works more like the thermostat in your house. If the thermostat is set at 70 degrees, the heating and cooling systems will work to maintain the house at 70 degrees. If the front door or window is left open and the house temperature drops below 70 degrees, the heater will kick on and heat the house until it is 70 degrees. If the house temperature is above 70 degrees, the heating system will decrease output and reduce the temperature to 70 degrees. In the isolate, the input sensor is a small temperature probe that is placed on the infant's skin. If the infant's temperature goes above or below the set temperature, the heater will increase or decrease heat output until the infant's temperature matches the set temperature. A neutral thermal environment is a state where the infant is able to maintain a normal temperature with minimal metabolic demands. Thermoregulation is the homeostatic process to maintain a steady body temperature despite changes in external conditions. This is a balancing act between heat generation, called thermogenesis, and methods of heat loss. Hypothermia occurs when the infant's core temperature falls below the normal range. It may be caused by environmental factors or disorders that impair thermoregulation, like sepsis, intracranial hemorrhage, drug withdrawal, or a combination of factors. Preterm infants who are hypothermic when admitted to the NICU have increased morbidity and mortality. Infants have a reduced capacity to generate heat and exclusively rely on the metabolism of brown fat as a source of thermogenesis. This process also requires the consumption of oxygen and glucose. This process is called non-shivering thermogenesis. 
Infants are not able to generate an adequate shivering response to hypothermia due to their lack of developed skeletal muscle. Other methods of heat production include voluntary muscle activity and peripheral vasoconstriction. Infants tend to lose more heat to the environment than adults. Neonates born before 28 weeks gestation are at high risk for heat loss. Preventing heat loss in extremely low birth weight infants can be very difficult. When an infant's temperature begins to fall, neonates respond with peripheral vasoconstriction to minimize heat loss, followed by a rise in metabolic rate to increase heat production. In physiological terms, this condition is defined as cold stress, and it triggers additional metabolic defense mechanisms that utilize more oxygen and glucose. When these stores are depleted, the infant becomes hypothermic. Neonatal cold injury is a rare form of hypothermia that may occur in low birth weight infants or term infants with neurologic disorders when the core temperature falls below 32 degrees. It occurs more frequently in home deliveries, emergency deliveries, and settings where there is inadequate support for maintaining a warm environment. However, it can still occur in the hospital. Severe hypothermia causes a depression in all activities of body organs, leading to lethargy and poor feeding, respiratory distress, circulation disturbances, or even death. Hyperthermia may be caused by a hot environment, infection, dehydration, central nervous system dysfunction, or medications. Environmental causes are frequently the cause of hyperthermia in infants. This can be caused by phototherapy, overwarming with an incubator or radiant warmer, or too many layers of clothing. An infant overwarmed will appear with the same temperature in the core and the extremities. Overheating activates various heat-losing processes like skin vasodilation, which causes flushing, redness, and behavioral changes like the spread eagle position. Full-term infants may sweat. With severe hyperthermia, the infant may become hyperactive and irritable. An infant with a fever due to endogenous heat production, such as associated with an infection, will present with peripheral vasoconstriction manifesting as a warm temperature on the trunk and cold extremities that may appear pale blue.